Hello, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hopalong Studio. So in today's video, I wanted to show you how you can turn very simple stenciled images like this into more graphical images. So let's get started. So to start with, I'm, I have a five by seven piece of paper and I'm going to add my stencil on top. I'm putting a little bit off to the left. I find that there is a stronger design when I start using the rule of thirds. And so I'm gonna tape my stencil down. You also wanna tape any images around it that you may end up inking through by accident. This is to make sure you just get a nice clear image without any, any marks. So once you actually put your stencil down and you've added your tape around it to make sure that it doesn't bleed into other images, the next thing to do is actually add your ink. So I'm going to start with antique linen. I want to do the bottom of the mushrooms first. I'm actually using a distress blending tool and some Tim Holtz distress ink. This is actually clean foam. I just basically wash them between uses. And sometimes I actually take a piece of paper and, and put it around where I am working just so if I'm a bit worried about having some color bleed over, then at least then you don't have to worry about it nearly as much. We get a little bit on top of the mushroom, I'm going to be coming with darker colors anyway, so it's not that much of an issue. Which is why I'm starting with the bottom. You want to start with those light colors first, because then again, any dark colors you put on can hide some of the mistakes if you, if you happen to bleed into another area. There's also different types of tools that you can use for this that are a little bit more detailed, which might prevent you from having too many issues with with ink ending up in places you don't want. But this works pretty well for me, so I use what I have. A strong believer in don't always buy new tools. There's lots of new tools on the market. I always look at what I have, and if it works for me, I just continue on with it. So I've added a little bit of antique linen. I'm gonna add in a little bit of this frayed burlap. And yeah, usually most people would probably actually get a different foam, but in my case, I don't have a big issue with cross-contaminating my, my ink pads a little bit. So, and because the colors are fairly similar, I'm not, I'm not fussed. But if you have too much of a color, color differentiation, you can end up running into issues. And I'm assuming the light's coming in from this direction. So I am adding in the darker colors just on the one side. I'm going to finish with a tiny bit of vintage photo. Again, you just want to try to add a little bit of interest to this by, by adding a little bit of shading. But again, trying not to go too, too far. So you do want to show some variation in color. I'm going to start by actually adding a full layer of wild honey on the top of the mushrooms. In this case, because this is a fairly pointy stencil, I'm finding that there are, it's hard to get a really good circular motion when you're trying to blend. It almost works better just to tap and pull the ink a little bit. I like to try to do a popular, pop, proper circular motion most of the time, but in this case, I kind of work with what I got. That's layer one. I'm gonna come with some fossilized amber next. I'm assuming as I'm working on this piece, I'm actually gonna take a little bit of washi tape and put it across the image very, very lightly. This particular mushroom is a little bit more problematic because of the placement of it to try to make sure that you get the colors that you want 
without blending into other colors. And because this washi tape is so, so low tack, it allows you to do this type of work fairly easily. So that's going to make my life a little bit easier as I'm working on these, on these mushrooms. And I'm making the assumption as I'm working on this is that the light is coming probably from this direction. So basically you're getting a little bit of, sh of lightness on here and you're going to get light along the tops of the mushrooms. The more I'm learning how to paint, the more I understand like the importance of understanding where your light source is. And by actually adding this to, to other work that you do, you can end up with some really neat images because instead of everything being very very like one dimensional you can end up bringing some sense of realism and shape and it, you don't have to always follow the rules that way but it's it is a nice thing when I'm working on on pieces just to be able to have that okay and I'm gonna go to spice marmalade next So there you go. You can see that I've actually done a fairly good job with my shading. I haven't ended up with a lot of ink, not in places where I want ink. And this allows us to start with a really good image to start adding some additional patterning. So what I want to do once the ink is fully dry is starting to add some doodles and some embellishments to these mushrooms. There are many things you can use for applying ink to this. You can use jelly pens, pit pens, Secura Micron pens. There's a lot of different ones out on the market. I'm actually choosing to use a dip pen and the Speedball Super Black India ink. I like the Super Black India ink just because it uh, is always water fast, so I've been using it on a lot of different projects. In this case, I'm actually putting a little bit in a container. This keeps it a little bit tidier for me. I also don't want all of my entire bottle of ink to dry out. So if you choose to use a dip pen, there's a few things you may want to consider. One, I usually use a dip pen nib that actually is fairly large. This one's really great. I got this from my local art store. It can do very fine lines and very thick lines. So this also holds a lot of ink. So it's really great when I'm working on this type of project. So when you are using ink, you want to, you generally want to dip in and you want to actually pull a little bit of the ink off the nib. And sometimes I even write on another piece of paper just to make sure I don't end up with any globs of ink. Because you have a glob of ink, you can basically end up creating a pool on your surface. So the first thing I do is very gently start outlining the stenciled image. And right now my, my pen has a fair amount of ink on it. So it's important that I go very lightly as I work on this. What I like about it is you can go thick and you can go thin and so depending on even the look you want and where you want shadows and shading on this, this is why I love using a dip pen for this sort of work. I like the variation as well as the ability to go quite thin in areas. When I was first learning how to use a dip pen, I thought they were only really used for calligraphy. And once I've discovered them for art, I've found them extremely helpful for being able to learn control of my, of my ink medium. And I like the variety of inks and different things that you can use. I do enjoy that instead of having to use multiple sizes of pens and have to continually change what I'm working on. I like being able to use one and being able to have a thicker or a thinner line depending on what I want to accentuate as I work. 
And there you can see I, I was pulling down and my, my pen kind of separated, no ink came out, so now it's time to re-ink my pen. So with this particular nib, I actually can ink a fair amount of the surface before I run out of ink. There's lots of different nibs out there. I've, I have some ones that are way finer than this. They're meant for doing filigree. They're great, but it's almost every second or third stroke I end up having to re-ink my nib, and I, I'm a little bit impatient for that kind of thing. But for the right spot and the right detail, I'm willing to take the time and have the patience. You'll find you'll usually do better if you're using a smooth cardstock for this. If you don't use a smooth cardstock, you are going to get a variation in results. What I like about using a dip pen too is it actually forces me to be way more gentle as I work. I tend to grip really hard when I write and so by using a dip pen you actually realize that unless you want really strong lines the last thing you want to do is grip hard. You'll see me moving my sheet a lot. The reason for that is the dip pen doesn't just write in any direction. You have to be pulling that kind of more downward stroke. I'm sure other people have done this before with stencils. I uh, personally started doing this a few weeks ago. Um, it was a bit of a self-care activity, but it was also part of a necessity. I was looking, I wanted to add mushroom images into a scrapbooking page that I was doing. And I needed a mushroom, I wanted to use mushrooms for my, one of my embellishments. And I realized I didn't have any large mushroom stamps. And because I've been working on my own art skills lately, I had a moment of, well, why don't I just use a stencil to get the general shape and add some Zentangle, add some doodling, and kind of see where it comes. So instead of having something, instead of having to feel like I need to go buy a new stamp, instead I basically used what I already did have. So now that you've outlined it, now you want to actually start thickening the lines in places. In this case, because I know I'm coming off of here, I'm actually going to put a fine line like that where I believe that the mushroom would actually finish off its line. And here, I'm just going to kind of follow where I think it'd be thinner or thicker and would actually kind of make sense in the shape of the image. In this case, I'm just assuming that that's going to come down like that. And you want to make sure that when you are working with ink, that you do not run your hand across what you just inked. Because I, I have had a few moments of having those sorts of mistakes and having spent a bunch of time putting a piece together and then basically smearing it by accident. I kind of made a mistake there. I should have actually done this line before I did the line in behind. It's something to think about when you're working. But what's in the foreground and what's in the background so that you don't do something like that. So now it's time to add some patterns. And these patterns can be anything. So in this case, I'm going to start with something really simple. Let's start by just doing some cross hatching. And this is where using a dip pen can be really nice because 
if you're willing to go very late with your strokes, you get these very fine lines. Went a little wonky with my lines there, but I will fix it by the time I get my dueling done, it's going to be a whole lot less noticeable. And it's almost better just start doing your cross hatching at the larger spots where you're going to have to figure out a really strong angle because these small areas are a little bit more forgiving. Again, I'm not necessarily worried about perfect. This is supposed to be kind of relaxing, but it's a great activity for figuring out how to have better pen control. It's been great for figuring out how to use my dip pens more effectively. If I was going to do this again, I would have actually started the left and gone right. That way I don't have to worry about possibly having my hand in a spot that I recently had ink. adding a dot into every square. So now I'm going to continue the same pattern down here. I'm going to make it a little bit wider though. One thing I've realized is I went a little thin with my boxes and that made it a little bit harder to be able to get those little dots in there and have them look good. So I am just going to give myself a little more space with these guys. So now that we have finished the first mushroom, we're going to move on to the next one. So in this case, I'm going to do little curves. So basically, basically making little rainbow shapes. And then you just want to change the angle of each shape compared to the one before. And I usually try to do three strokes for each direction. So that's the second pattern for the mushroom. And then the third one, I'm actually going to try to do these little zigzags. So what I'm doing is basically doing little triangles. a few of the spaces. I'm just putting little dots in between. So there's a few considerations to make when you are choosing your pattern. Like for example, the triangles, I am trying to make them fit correctly into scale for the spaces that I have. So it's something to think about of whatever pattern you choose, how is it going to fit into the space in a way that's actually going to be effective instead of too crowded. As well, like you can tell in here where I made some of these areas a little bit too small, it's actually watching your size 
to make sure again that your your grids and everything actually fit well and it doesn't look like a bunch of black ink and as well you can have a lot of fun with this there's a lot of different patterns you can choose there's there's Zentangle uh, patterns there's doodles there's all sorts of stuff like on the internet and other places that you can get inspiration for how to use patterns I even find like going to museums, going to art galleries, especially if you are able to go to ones that have different cultures shown, you can really get a sense of the different options for patterns and even like how certain certain places and have different patterns in different cultures and other places. And so it's a great place to go for inspiration, to learn about other cultures and be able to maybe take something from what you see and be able to add it to your own artwork. And this for me is a really great self-care exercise. Uh, it's one of those things I can do when I want to do something kind of artistic, but I don't necessarily have the energy to maybe come up with something completely unique. And it's a, a chance for me to work on my drawing skills, to work on how I doodle, and try to have better understanding of how to make my my dip pen work. And so there's a couple more things I wanted to do to this. Uh, one is to actually add almost like little shadow marks. So do the dip pen, you just have to go extremely lightly. And I'm just trying to emulate that these are some places that shadows will fall. Again, it's not about perfectly uniform lines. You actually want to make them very ununiform. And they don't have to be everywhere, but just some of the spots that you really want to accent that there's their shadow. one of my favorite reasons for using a dip pen is for things like this where just by the movement of your hand and your wrist you can get these really light marks and you can add in some of this these interesting textures because I want to leave this a little bit grounded because right now it feels like it's floating in space I'm just going to add some squigglies in here to kind of have as a some kind of background foreground so that to me looks a little bit more grounded and again this is where you can add some of these shadow marks show that you're grounding the object So here's your finished project. It's basically a, a beautiful image that can be turned into a card. It could be cut out. I've cut out these images here and, and actually done different patterns on them as well. And these can be added to a card to, to add a little bit more interest to it. You could also just leave this as is. There's lots of different ways you can deal with this, but it's another way you can use your stencils in a really interesting manner and it actually adds a lot more versatility to something that's sometimes seen as more a background or a textured element to a, our journal page or to a card. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, if you could like it, subscribe to my channel and maybe provide a comment below. As well, I have my website hopalongstudio.com where I have other ideas on some creative techniques and other ways you can build a creative habit in your own life. I hope you have a really great week and I will see you next time.